Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's be seated in his presence. You let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. Holy Spirit, I can't thank you enough for this conference. My heart is filled with joy. My heart is filled with gratitude to you. I sat on the chair and I was just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I know the devil is not happy at what is happening, but he's too late. And these, your daughters will be liberated. They will go out of here joyful, full of joy, and making, you know, making the move to make amends and to do things differently. Lord Jesus, it's all about you. Holy Spirit, anoint my mortal lips of clay. Help me never to preach my own message. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Now, Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The operative word there is you. You arise, you shine. You, the female minister, arise. You, the female minister, begin to shine. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That glory is already risen upon you. It's not going to rise upon you. It has already risen upon you. And the Bible tells you why you need to arise and shine. My title is Arise Female Minister in Your Spirituality. That is what I'm speaking about. He said, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep gross darkness the people. Ah. Like our sister said, I don't want to go back into Deborah and everything. This is a Deborah ministry. It's an entire ministry. And we are more aware and we are very, very, uh, we are, we are very, very sensitive to the time we are now. We are like the, the sons of Isiaka. We are able to discern the times and what we ought to do. Now, what do we, what do, we do as female ministers? When there's gross darkness. When there's gross darkness, what do we do? But before I go into that, I want to quickly explain some terms. When we say female, it is what? We, women. A wombed man. Abby? When we say minister, it is anybody who ministers to someone. You, a biblical female minister, you minister the Bible, you minister the word of God. You, the, you know, you are according to scripture, you're a king, you're a priest, and you are what? A prophet. In the, in the Old Testament, you know there were three distinct ministries, king, prophet, and um, priest. But here, the three have been deposited into us. We are God's official legislator here on planet Earth, God's um, battle axe, God's weapon of war, and God's man in the gap. We're God's prophet for the hour. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the biblical meaning of a minister is one who serves, who serves. You are a servant of all. You are not a boss. You are a servant of all. That's why Jesus washed the feet of his uh, disciples. And when you come to the book of um, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5 to 6, Apostle Paul made it clear. He said, who then is Paul? Who then is Apollos? But ministers. We are ministers. So what is the true meaning of biblical ministry? What has, it, biblical ministry is not what has God, God done through me so much as what has God done in me. God has to do something in me because he can, before he can do something through me. The reason why there's so much wishy-washy ministry is because we don't allow God to do something in us. God can only walk through broken vessels yielded vessels he can't walk through just any vessel you have to be broken you have to be yielded and then he has to um, impact you impact you before you can edify others but it, you, you see you, you cannot give what you don't have you can't give what you don't have there must be something you have before you give it biblical ministry therefore is essentially what a Christian, a believer does with his or her life to advance the kingdom of God here on planet Earth, starting with his own personal walk with God. God wants to be a living witness in you and through you. And this is the truth about ministry. This is the truth many people 
have not yet gleaned. Many ministers have not yet gleaned about ministry. Many ministers are interested in having big ministries, let people say, I'm this, I'm that. I have so many houses, so many cars, so many big tents, so many. But the truth of the matter is, how many of these people are on their way to heaven with you? How many? How many is actually the harvest picking? Do you get what I mean? Because ministry is about who you can truly, thoroughly impact for Christ. Ministry is about reproducing Christ in others. It's not about it reproducing you. No. It's not about reproducing you. It's about reproducing Christ in others. Our Apostle Paul said, be you a follower of me as I am of Christ. The reference must always be Christ. The reference cannot afford to be us. Because we are simply earthen vessels. Except for the treasure in us. And sometimes we can allow the treasure to remain dormant in us. And still be doing ministry. And still be doing ministry. So, ministry is about God in us, our hope of glory. Christ in us, our hope of glory. Biblical spirituality is your relationship with God as a female minister in his service. It is the pursuit of God and the things of God through your relationship and rootedness in our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we need to put God, give God his pride of place. We need to give the Holy Spirit his pride of place. I see many people. I was watching YouTube one day. And one, I don't like to mention names. I won't mention names, but a very top, you know, minister, female minister, was talking about writing books. I said, so you just write books. You just give it this title. You just give it to this title, sell it on Amazon and make money. And I'm thinking to myself, spiritual books? Books that are going to affect lives? Books that are going to get people into the kingdom of heaven? Books that you want to impact? You don't write spiritual books anyhow. You write books that God has ministered to you. God has given you what to write, how to write it, what to speak about. You write books in the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't write books to just make money, just write any book to make money. We are spiritual people. We belong to a kingdom. Our own kingdom is called the kingdom of light. We have led the works of darkness and we are following light. Jesus is our is our master, he's our leader. The Holy Spirit is the one in us. We don't do things, we don't run ahead of him. We don't lack behind him. We don't do things out of emotion. We don't do things out of, I want to make money. Because money is not the focus. Uh, I'm not preaching poverty. I always make that clear. Because Jesus died to make me rich. And I'm very rich by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. I'm tied to an economy that cannot suffer recession. But that cannot be my focus because Jesus said in the book of Matthew 6, 33, seek you first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. Then all other things shall be added unto you. There are additions unto you. Once you are seeking God, once you are seeking Christ, once you are seeking his kingdom, I tell you, from 16 years of ministry work, go and ask about me. I'm not saying it's not good to give to God. You have to give to God. You have to be generous in your giving to God as God leads you. But that is not the focus. You came here now. You can't find anywhere where they wrote offering on the program. Because that's not my focus. Even though we spent a lot of money. That's not my focus. My focus is what I'm going to grow in you. So you don't do things. As a female minister, you don't do things anyhow. You don't do things from the... And we find a lot of fleshly activities now, which is so... It, it breaks the heart of God. Let me tell you something. Until we get to heaven, 
we will not know those who are true generals of Christ. It is when we get to heaven that we know the true generals. It is when we get to heaven that we know the true generals. Some years ago, a pastor contacted me. And he said, Mommy, please can you come and minister at my church? You know, at that time, I was not as wise as this. I just started the ministry and you learn the ropes as you go. You learn the ropes as you go. Now, and I learned to actually pray through before I accept any ministration. So, but because it was a, a minister I knew and I'd known for some time, so I just said, okay. About three weeks to the ministration, he now called me. He said, mommy, you know why we are putting this uh, program together? I said, why? He said, ah, it's because we, we need money. We need money. That, that, I'm telling you, true story. We need money. We need money. So, uh, you know what you are going to do for us? You know, just preach a, a beautiful message on how uh, people will be blessed. You know, when they sow seed, how their seed will be multiplied. How you can talk about your own testimony. God, I know you have testimony, mommy. And then you just say you are sowing something large because I know you are a giver. And then you just encourage them to give and to give and to give. So I said, sir, you know, this is why some people call me hard. I'm not hard. I'm simply principled. That's all. And I'll continue to be principled. You know? So, this was three weeks to the program. And he had advertised the program and everything. So I said to him, I said, you mean you are actually inviting me to a program to come and raise money for you? That is not to raise souls. Not to advance the kingdom of God. Not to get souls into the kingdom of God. I said, thank you. Please count me out. He thought I was joking. I said, I'm not coming for that kind of a meeting. I said, because number one, your, your, your reason, your motive for putting up that program is wrong. And may I never be a part of that wrong motive in the mighty name of Jesus. I tell people, oh, when they come and say, mommy, I come and help us with Mrs. Toya is here. What did I tell them? I, I wasn't raised that way. I'm sorry. Emma Binu. Emma Binu Momoshi. I don't know how to raise seed offerings. I don't have to be a money doubler. I don't know how to ask you to come and help God so that God will not fail. I don't have to use, I don't know how to use sweet mouth to collect money from you. I don't know. I've not been trained that way. And I think I'm comfortable at where I'm at. I think I'm comfortable. The other day, we had a, something here. They came for an interview here. And the interviewer was telling me, oh, mommy, this was about uh, maybe seven years ago, eight years ago. Said, mommy, ah, you know, um, we are here. We are not seeing the jeeps. We are not seeing the, uh, I'm telling you sincerely. I had just my, my care car then. He said, we're not seeing the jeeps. We're not seeing the chemical. So I said, I'm not into ministry because of jeeps and jets. Maybe some people are in ministry because of that. But that is not my own focus. I don't preach about that. But I thank God, after 16 years of ministry, God has blessed me with jeeps that I didn't run after. People blessed me. People blessed my husband. Do you get what I mean? So I'm riding jeeps now. Amen. But I didn't have to twist anybody's arms to get them. Do you understand what I'm saying? What am I trying to say? Do ministry properly. If you want to be in ministry, do it as unto the Lord. Don't, don't, don't engage yourself in all this nonsense that is around now. It is so distressing to God. If you see how Jesus is weeping, how God is weeping, how the heart of God is broken, because of the rich deposit and his sacrifice for us. Spirituality is the pursuit of God and the things of God through our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit. Genuine spirituality is seeking first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, not seeking after things, not seeking after things. You see, you are either seeking God or seeking things. It's one of the two. 
You are either seeking God or seeking things. Jesus put it this way. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. It is wide because it takes everything. It is narrow because it takes only Jesus and you. You know, a minister's top priority, a female minister's top, top priority, a spiritual female minister's top, will either be God or money. It can't be both. You can't serve God and mammon. You cannot serve both God and mammon. You need to arise in your spirituality as a female minister to give God his parity. Jesus didn't give us many options. He didn't give us many possibilities. He said, seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. So why do you need to arise in your spirituality as a female minister? Hmm. The darkness is gross. The darkness is gross. You see, the people who will excel, who will overcome this time, are people of salvation, true salvation, who arise in true salvation. Not just John 3.3. 3. Except a man is born again, he cannot see. You see, many people don't read properly. He says you cannot see. Except you are born again, you cannot see. So born again only confers on you the status of seeing that there is a kingdom to inherit. And many people always stand at that periphery. They never go beyond that they have seen. They say they have accepted Christ, even female ministers. Their lives remain the same. Their speech remains the same. Their, their way of life remains the same. Their thoughts remain the same. Their desires remain the same. Their culture remains the same. Everything about them remains the same. Nothing changes. And they say we are born again. And we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. We have believed in Jesus. And we are born again. You only see you, at the best, you're a carnal Christian. And as a female minister, if you remain a carnal Christian, you cannot truly impact anybody. But John 3, 5 says, except a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. So what makes us to enter? The word and the spirit. And that speaks of sanctification. We do not, we, you need to arise not only in ultimate salvation, not just instant. Because Jesus made us to understand that he that endures to the end will be saved. I know some people will say, once born again, always born again. Ah, you've not heard it. You have not heard that one. Ah, what do they call itself? They call it by one word. Once saved, forever saved. Hmm. You know you can use the Bible to support any, any doctrine. When it is clear in Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews chapter 4, if, it's, if, if I'm correct. He said, it's in the book of Hebrews. He said, if those who receive Christ before, if they turn away, if they depart, if they turn their hearts away from him, he said, there is no more repentance. They cannot be one again. Seeing that they have crucified the Lord Jesus again. Jesus said, in the book of Matthew, he said, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And he said it in two places. It is he that endures to the end. Then, as if to emphasize that, he said, when I come, will I find faith? Will I find faith? If he does not find faith, anybody who is not of faith is sin. Will that person go with him? Even if you say you have been born again. You see, the whole of the epistles is written to tell us we should be holy as God is holy. Giving us instructions in holy living, righteous living. And you say all those things don't matter. There is a grace that covers all. You can give your life to Christ and live like the devil. It doesn't matter. You are still going to heaven. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 
So there's no responsibility on you at all concerning this new life that you have received. There's no responsibility on you at all as a female minister concerning your relationship with the almighty God to arise in your spirituality and rooted in Christ. I don't think God meant it that way. And the Bible doesn't preach that, at least the Bible I read. <laughs> True spirituality is a mind preoccupied with the things above. Above. Eternal things, not transient things. The things that are being preached now is how many cars you have, how many jets you have, what you can buy. When you go, how many people are following you? Do you get what I mean? Ah. Hmm. And you see people rushing there. But you see, when I was, when my heart was broken, the Lord said to me, said it has to be like that. He yeah, said, when he comes, will he find faith? But I pray for you, as much as I pray for myself, that he will find faith in me. And he will find faith in you. You see, I always tell people something. If there were two buildings, eh, you, you want to buy a house, and you go to an estate agent, and he shows you two buildings, and one is so beautiful, so wonderful, so gorgeous, so eye-catching, so mind-blowing. And the other is like, not so attractive. And he now tells you, and he said, oh, it's this one. It's this one I want. And he now tells you, he said, well, in about 15 to 20 years' time, this building is uh, going to sink because, you know, the foundation is not so, so good. It's going to sink. But this one will last forever. Which one will you take? But you know that every single day, people are choosing Barabbas over Jesus. They are choosing Barabbas over Jesus. How many minutes do I have? Because I don't want to. So how do you arise in your spirituality as a female minister? There are certain areas you need to arise in. Number one, you need to arise as a woman of genuine salvation. You need to arise as a woman of genuine sanctification. You need to arise as a woman of the spirit. You need to arise as a woman of the word. You need to arise as a woman of vision. God's vision for your life, not your own vision. You need to arise as a woman of faith. You need to arise as a woman of focus. You need to be focused on the reason why God brought you here. You need to arise as a woman of prayer. You need to cultivate the habit of praying without season. You need to arise as a woman of service. You need to arise as a woman of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to know that a female minister has a walk and a walk. A walk and a walk. Do you understand? You are children of light. You are not of darkness. You are to light so shine before men. God told me long ago. He said, my daughter, I have taken you out of the crowd. Don't seek to go back to the crowd. And since that day, I've never sought to go back to the crowd. I've sought to seek the will and purpose of God for my life. And I don't think I'm doing badly. I'm going to be 67 in October by the grace of God. And God continues to beautify my life. And I thank God for it. And I keep on running after him. I run after him as if it's going out of fashion. And he keeps on just pouring his blessings upon me. His favor upon me. Because he would be unjust if he didn't do that. I want to... I want to encourage you as a female minister today. Get into the word of God and make it work for you. You see, seek God's way of doing things. Don't seek the way of the world of doing things. It is e ephemeral. It is for some time. There's a beauty attached to this world, but it's a fading beauty. It is a fading beauty. But the beauty attached to God is a beauty that the path of the just is as a shining light. Bright, you know, shining brighter and brighter and brighter to a perfect day. You know, I have a, I'm a bundle of testimonies. And there is one I just want to share very, very quickly. Because I want you to see how much God has our heart. When I started this ministry, man, you know, I had businesses. God asked me to close down all my businesses and sit here. And I told God, I said, I am not going to beg. 
I ain't going to beg no man. I ain't going to ask any man. Come on, I help God not to fail. If you like, fail. And I leave this place, but I know you can't fail. And God told me two things. He said, one, you will eat in plenty and be satisfied as my servant. Two, this ministry will never lack divine resources. And those two things have been marvelously exemplified in my life. So, this one I want to tell you now. When I started the ministry, because of resources, you know, I was expending a lot of resources into ministry work. I could no longer afford to travel business class. When I was in business, I used to travel business class, sometimes first class, you know, using business money from my business. So I could no longer afford, and I started traveling economy class. So one day, I went abroad. And those who are in Dodim will testify to me. Those who are in Dodim at that time, because I gave that testimony there. I went abroad. And I traveled uh, my business class, uh, my, my economy, which somebody calls toilet class. An aunt of mine will say toilet. It's no longer toilet class. So, because economy now is three million. So it's no longer toilet class. Anyway, I traveled my economy class. And then I got to the airport to check in. The queue was so long. This God is a father. Baba to fero money, Baba. Baba to to yayi your money, Baba. Baba to on for moshere. Baba to on bomola rugeni. So the queue was so long. And I, I I was standing on the queue. After some time, I got fed up. I want to sit down. That when the queue is at the end, I will join. I sat down. And I was just looking, minding my own business. Then I saw Governor Fashola coming. And you know where they bought the first class and business that they don't wait with us. So. It's another, their own is different. They just walk in and uh, they, they, they escort them in very fast, you know. Their own is so fast. No waiting, no nothing. So that one didn't even bother me, really. But following Governor Fashola, not following him as in following him more, because before they, they, they now interpret if Governor Fashola had gone, no, he had gone on his own, no, he's not following him as following him. Then there was this little girl. This little girl was coming. She can get like this. Don't know. So I was looking at her, waiting for her to come and join me. She now entered the first class. I don't know what happened to me that day. Mobadi day, the, the anger that, you know, when I say holy violence, the anger that evoked in me. And I said, God, when I was not serving you, I was flying business class. I wasn't serving you. I was serving money. I was serving my business. I had enough money to fly business class. None I'm serving you and for years I've been flying economically. Lord, I don't want this one anymore. You said I should ask of you. And you will give me the heathen for my inheritance and the uttermost part of there for my possession. As I was seated there, that's what I was telling the Lord. I said, I now ask of you, let this be the last time that I'll fly business um, economic class. I'm not flying economic class again. I'm not flying it again. If you could bless me with business class when I was doing business, what are you what, what are you watching? That now I'm in economy. That's the way I talk to God because I don't say it. He knows I'm feeling it anyway, so I don't need to pretend. Ah, it's true. He knows that is the way I'm feeling anyway. So why am I pretending to him? Let me just be open to him now. I said so. Why? Ah, uh, I was shaking my head. I'm not, I was angry. I was. I said, look at that small girl. Ah. Uh, uh. A whole minister of God. Long life. I say, God, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't know God heard. And heaven invaded earth for my sake. I'm telling you a true story. Before the almighty God who created me. Who was adored him the day I shared this testimony? Immediately it happened. I'm telling you a true story. I now went in front. You know the last counter that we get to. Before we board the plane, that they take our passport and look at our tickets. The person there, the representative of the airline there, took my passport, looked at it, gave it back to me, took my ticket, looked at it, 
and tore it up. I said, hey, Modaro, Kini Moshe, what did I do? Why is she tearing up my ticket? She just pressed a button, another button pass came out, and she looked at me and smiled and said, you've been upgraded to business class. That is the God we serve. Those who are in Dodim know I'm a bundle of testimonies. Faithful. He didn't even wait for the next time. And I tell you, since that time, God has never relegated me and he will never relegate me. Last day I wanted to travel. They said the plane ticket was Kinikan millions and everything. I said, over to you, God. He bought that plane ticket for me. Uh-uh. It's because we don't know God. We've allowed people to misrepresent God for us. We've allowed people to complicate God for us. We've allowed people to tell a lie about God to us. Go and search God out yourself. He's your father. He's your father. He said in his word, he said, can you ask me for bread and I'll give you stone. Jesus speaking. Can you ask me for fish and I'll give you a serpent. Uh-uh. Eh, da. You are not good. You know how you, 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 you baby your children. You know how much you, you, you mother your children. You know how much when, when your children come to you, if, if you can give them, you will give them. If you can't give them, you will go out of your way to go and look for it to give them. And then you are distrusting God. You should repent. Rise up. Trust and obey. For, For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He shares. I want you to offer just one prayer point to God. Father, please help me to trust and obey you. Help me to trust and obey you. Help me to be rooted and grounded in you. Help me to see you clearly every day. Love you more dearly. Follow you more in complete and total obedience. Help me not to complicate you. Help me not to distrust you. Help me, Father, to trust you, Father. Help me to please you with my life. Help me, Lord, to please you in every area and facet of my life. Help me to please you. In my spirituality, help me to become connected with you, rooted and grounded in you alone. Ah, Baba, help me to trust and obey. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Yeah. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey.